All right. So a different Robert is asking, can a spirit or other thing be a fatal attraction? All right, Robert, uh, the other Robert, we thank you for this really good question. And again, if I'm not getting at the, the right, um, the right gist of what you're you're asking feel free to ask again and give us clarification um but i think the a, an important concept first to, to understand is, is just the nature of of death and where it comes from and sin and and uh, I, it's just your question interesting with this concept of fatal attraction so let's look at james 1 james 1 starting at verse 14 it reads but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So there's this process that goes from being tempted to then being enticed and, and, and being drawn away by one's own desires. And then when desire is conceived, we, we cave to our desires, we sin, and then from sin comes death. That's kind of the flow of things. And notice it's one's own desires, but then there is an external temptation. So there's an external temptation that's then evoking our desires, and we're just caving to our desires. That's kind of uh, the flow of things. And then in 1 John 2, 16, it talks about the different types of lust that are at the root of a lot of sin. And he writes, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So lust of flesh, lust of eyes, pride of life. And it's so interesting that we see these when we look at Genesis 3, 6, as to Eve's fall and decision to grab the fruit. So she, it, it, it says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she, she saw, so lust of the eyes, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Oh, sorry. Okay, there it was. The pleasant to the eyes. So it looked good. looked like it tastes good. And that tree is desired to make one wise. So that's a little bit of pride. She wanted to elevate herself. She took of the fruit and did eat and also gave to her husband. And he did eat. So she's caving to her desires. Satan tempted her. The serpent tempted her, you know, lied to her, deceived her, all these things. But ultimately, she had desire within that then she caved to and sinned. And this is how our interaction always will go with then with the spiritual world, where Satan is trying to seduce us. He's trying to tempt us, but he's playing at our internal, our internal desires. And so can a spirit or other thing be a fatal attraction? Um, I mean, yes. I mean, if you're setting yourself up, again, I'm, I'm not sure if you're saying, like, can you fall in love with the spirit and then end up getting killed? I don't know if you're going there, but you can hang out with a wrong spirit, with an evil spirit that then will lead you into then being tempted to cave to very strong desires you have. And we're warned about these spirits. First Timothy 4, verses 1 to 2, it says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. And then we see there's, there's in fact, a... A, a really great so story. I mean, it's a sad story, but I, I find a fascinating story in in First Kings chapter twenty-two about the ultimate demise of King Ahab. And he was a wicked king. He should have died many times, and God was just so patient with him. We kept giving him more chances. But what ultimately led to his death was basically he had a bunch of false prophets that he chose to listen to. And a prophet of God came, was brought and, and gave, had a vision, Micaiah. And in his vision, Micaiah said that, um, uh, verse 19, he says, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, the Lord said, who will pers persuade Ahab to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke and another uh, another spoke, and then a spirit came forward, and he stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. 
The Lord said to him, in what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. So these are the words of Micaiah. You would think then that Ahab would know better, know his life's at risk, but nope, he still chose to go into battle anyway. He listened to the lying spirits, and and up that was his demise right there. So sad story, but definitely there are spirits out there, and Satan just ultimately he wants to see our destruction. That's what he cares about, it, uh, and uh, hanging out with him, listening to him, and and any spirits with them. That's that's where it leads is to death. Thank you.